Here's Brody Brazil. Baseball's 162 game season wrapped up on Sunday. And then the day after, on Monday, MLB put out kind of a memo to essentially pump its own tires and boast a little bit about the year that was for them and their goals. And two main things stood out. Number one was the average game time this season. It drastically went down. They cut the time by about a half hour plus on average this season. And that's a great thing. I've been saying all along that baseball needs to be more digestible. Congrats to MLB on doing it in a favorable way. The other thing they put out was that baseball attendance had one of its biggest spikes in years and decades. And that's part of the interest factor for me. But the other part that I dug in deep on is that it says the Oakland A's had their attendance go up by 6% in 2023. Mind you, this is the Oakland A's franchise, which about two and a half weeks into the season alerted their fans and everybody else that they are actively trying to pursue relocation to Las Vegas and that they have ceased any activities in trying to stay, you know, in Oakland. You can't imagine that the support is going to go well after a move like that. Some would say it's the cost of doing business. If you're going to put that out there, what exactly did you expect in return? That attendance would go up or even stay the same? Most people were under the assumption it would go way down. But it's up. Oh, but there's a huge reason. Actually, two huge reasons. Well, one main thing of why it's up, and I will explain that in just a second. As for MLB's attendance, it was their largest jump since 1998. Good for them. 70.74 million fans, which is up 9.6% from last year. That is a significant amount. More than 6 million fans added from 2022 to 2023. So a lot of people go into games. I absolutely love that. The average per team was almost 30,000 per game here in 2023. And imagine if you had, you know, a healthy, prosperous, team in Oakland that was staying there and doubled down on that, just up the Oakland attendance alone. And I think you'd see every team in the league would have gotten to that 30,000 average collectively. But speaking of some individual teams, the Dodgers, the Padres, the Yankees, the Cardinals, Atlanta, the Phillies, Houston, and Toronto each reached the 3 million fan mark this season. That's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. First time eight teams had reached that plateau in a very long time. So a lot of individual teams doing well, collectively baseball doing well. You'll see every team's percentage up and down in a second. But there were 11 weekends during this baseball season that reached the combined 1.5 million fan mark, which is the most times that's happened since 2017. Also, I think, you know, we can understand that baseball in some ways is still recovering from COVID times and People's lifestyles changing and their preferences changing. 2021 season, I mean, as much as 2020 had no fans, 21 was limited in a lot of places, in a lot of ways. 22 getting more back to normal. I think here in 2023, it is about as normal as we'll see in upcoming years. 26 out of 30 teams, that's 86% of big league clubs, saw their attendance jump go up, right, in 2023. And the A's are one of them, huh? So let's let's take a look at the entire list here. This comes to us, by the way, from Codify. I saw their tweet. I retweeted their tweet with some certain questions, which we'll get to here. But there's a couple other teams I also want to point out, like good for the Reds and the Orioles and the Guardians. Cincinnati, Baltimore, and Cleveland with the biggest jumps. Small market baseball teams. You'll love to see it. Now, we're talking about percentage jumps here. So if they had a really bad last year, even a decent this year would up their percentage significantly. But I love to see it. The Reds were an interesting team. I know Cleveland didn't make the playoffs. But Baltimore obviously won the AL East. They won a lot of people over at Camden Yards. And I know their season had some side stories and off-the-field stuff and ownership stuff. But... Good for those three to be at the very top. You know, not the biggest name cities, so to speak, across baseball. The Florida teams, 
And again, I'm sure most of this was Tampa, but some of it was the Marlins. Uh, well, I guess they're both at 28%, but you understand that for them to be where they're at, respectively, the Marlins at a much smaller number, but for them to have a jump of 28% from last season to this season, that's encouraging. How about the Padres, who were a disappointment most of the year, but came in with such high promise and Petco's beautiful. People in San Diego are such good baseball fans. Love to see that even for them, who had probably pretty good attendance in 2022, it jumped up 10% for 2023. Look, I'm not here to harp on the Giants. Um, I would suspect that maybe their numbers might even be flat or in the negative. By the way, side story, do I believe all these numbers? Mm, I don't know. Kind of reminds me of Facebook in the 2010s, the mid-2010s, like 2015 and 2016 when I'm posting videos on there. And the only people who can tell me how many videos have been watched or how many times is Facebook. And if they want to inflate something, they can. If they want to flat out lie about something, they can. How am I and who am I to know how many people actually saw a post or commented or liked or who are all these followers or subscribers or whatever? I'm saying baseball can fudge the numbers. Baseball can cook the books a little bit on these teams and their attendance figures. And I don't mean over like the whole season. I mean game by game, game by game. Um, so we'll take it for what they're worth. But the Giants, let's say they're around flat, a team that's not good in that situation. I think with the change of scenery, hopefully they're poised to bring in their next superstar. Um, that's a team I, I think their attendance is only going to go up from where it is right now. And then last, but well, actually I have two more here. Um, when you see the Dodgers and St. Louis in the negative, remember I just told you that both of those franchises were teams that brought in more than 3 million fans this year. So last year they probably brought in a ton. And it's hard to keep up that ridiculously high number. The Dodgers and Cardinals are doing just fine in terms of attendance. So that's why, again, some of this stuff is misleading. Even the Giants at plus 1%. Still plus 1%, so they say, and it's not like they're having a hard time drawing good crowds over at Oracle Park. Now, in Chicago, on the south side, the White Sox down 17%. Their team kind of falling apart, unraveling, the future very much uncertain. Now the team is asking for a new stadium location and public money with that. So, okay, um, that's probably the most discouraging, and by far, right, 17%. But it's more so what's going on in Chicago and the number to match. Okay, but the Oakland A's at a plus 6%? So how in the world did they get to that? I mean, I questioned it for a long time. I pondered it. Is that is that right? Can it be right? Is it is it fabricated? Well, when you want numbers, you go to Hal the Hot Dog Guy. <laughs> I can't wait until Hal sees this. So Hal on Twitter did the math for us. He's an economist, right? And I appreciate that. 75% of the A's increase in attendance over last year can be explained by the two prote protest games. Yeah, the two reverse boycott games. Well, the first one, June 13th, was the original, the OG reverse boycott. And then there was obviously a big fan movement on the 5th of August, too, to go along with the Giants game that was already going to draw pretty well, but it drew significantly better than the other day of that series, I'll explain. So the A's, I mean, you talk about up 6%. What does that mean in terms of actual numbers? 44,450. That's like one playoff game. <laughs> it's the difference. You put the A's in one playoff game, they would easily draw that. At the Coliseum. But that's what they were up all season from 2022. Okay. So now we know it's not a it's not an insurmountable number. So look at the June 12th attendance against the Rays. 48-48. Is that on a Monday night? And then on a Tuesday night, 27,759 for a difference of 22,911. Okay, so let's remember that 22,911. And then August 5th to 6th, those are the two Giants games. 37,553, 27,381. A difference on that first day of plus 10,172. So let's take the 22 number 
and the 10 number and put those together, and that gets us to 33,038 more fans that came literally to show their displeasure of the A's and relocation efforts. And 33,000 of 44,450 is about, yeah, 74.3%. Thanks, Hal. So the reason that the A's actually had more people come to their games in 2023 was primarily because of those two nights. Those two games, I should say. And not because the fans were happy to be going. I mean, I'm sure some were. But because they were going with that message. Those two games accounted for, what, 4% of the total 6% increase. And that brings me to, to wondering, like, if stuff really goes sideways here, and I mean from the Oakland perspective, if Las Vegas gets approved and if 2024 is the final season at the Coliseum or Las Vegas is good to go for whenever the A's are ready, attendance in 2024, in my guesstimation here, is going to be drastically impacted by relocation developments and efforts and ultimately approval. I mean, if this is a green light for the A's to go to Nevada, some fans are going to absolutely protest. They've already gone to their last A's game. They might still watch on TV. They might have some connections, but they are done going because they don't want to or because they can't handle it. It is an emotionally jarring situation. Right? You want to love something and you want to love the people involved with it, but it's difficult to do when it's being taken away. Some might have a sentimental last call. They're going to go one or two or five more times, or I've heard some people say they'll go as many times as they can to soak it in before it's gone. If, again, hypothetically, if that's what's happening here. But it's amazing because on the flip side, right? Let's, let's do a big fat 180 here. If there were fundamental changes and there was a promise that the A's would be staying in Oakland, we talk about the cut that might take place. It's going to take place in 2024 if relocation is approved. What if in some way, shape, or form, like I said, there was a complete 180 about leaving, a complete 180 about spending? I mean, if things were going well, the A's would have the biggest one-season boost. I mean, what were the Reds at, like, plus 40 Four percent or something like that. The the A's would easily be in that category. If fans could be shown the right things and the right promises, they're out there. They want so badly to commit to this. I can't right now, and they won't right now. But I just want to paint that side of the picture too. We talk about what it's not going to be in twenty twenty four. Another part of that is what it could be in 2024 in an alternate reality at this point. So, yeah, attendance up 6%. Four of those 6% uh, percentage points were because people were sending the opposite message of maybe the one that you would expect. Uh, you made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. So I can definitely see you back here next time.